you think that the salacious stands for bodacious, so his name is salacious bodacious? Because I really want his name to be salacious bodacious crumb. That is, I never thought of this before, and this is the coolest thing ever. Salacious bodacious crumb. Let's go. Dave Filoni, make it happen. Utsini for cowboy hat. <laughs> We'll start from there. Utini friends, welcome in. And <laughs> you're listening to Jawa Chatter. I am going to conclude that rant about salacious, bodacious, bodacious crumb. crumb. Well, well, I that's another B. What am I doing? Yeah, that was say that's redundant. What am I but doing? It's fine. Um, welcome in, friends. Uh, this is Jawa Chatter. And today we are discussing Knights of the Old Republic game remake made remade by Aspire, supposedly. Uh, that has been delayed indefinitely. That is, is the it Aspire. Yeah, it's Aspire. Yeah, no, that's what we're going to talk about today. And I have the article up. Anyways, joined with me for our Star Wars chat is Claudia. Not a really a Star Wars newbie. I just don't know if I should call you that anymore. But Claudia, hey, what's up? Hey. Hey. Uh, Nerdy, who is deep in thought over there. About salacious, bodacious crumb. It could be Asper, but Asper sounds Asper sounds more to me like, well, honestly, it sounds more to me like ass. Um, or aspartame, that's what it means. Whereas think aspire of. sounds like aspiring to something. So I could be wrong, though. Like, it could I be feel other like one. The long, I feel like the long vowel before the R would need the E after the R. This is so pointless because I don't think that the, I don't think PYR ever makes pyre. Or, no, I guess, no, it does. I yeah, it doesn't matter. No, it does. Um, we're, it, this doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the English I've language this company Asper for years. And I've been calling it Aspire for years. No, no, you I, honestly, you could be completely right here. I have I am not saying I'm right. Uh, so I could be the one that has been huh. doing that for years. Uh, either way, Aspire, Aspire in the Aspire. I don't care. Um. So, <laughs> for those that look, for those that don't know, uh, Knights of the Old Republic is. I love that you said that as if you were going to do different pronunciations and add mine in, and then you never you did added not. my pronunciation. Nah. You just went aspire, aspire, aspire <laughs> in the ass, aspire. <laughs> like I said, Asper, Asper, whatever. Uh, like Casper, like Aspen, yeah, like Casper. I, I was thinking like Aspen, Colorado, beautiful place to live. If you've never been to Aspen, uh, it's awesome. And it's expensive. Really great. If you want to go skiing, the skiing in Aspen, Colorado. Gorgeous. Have you skied yeah. in Aspen, Colorado? I have snowboarded in Aspen. Oh, I was Colorado. just about to ask you a skier or snowboarder. Yeah. Okay. I was a skier uh, when I was a, a wee 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 lad. Mm. Uh, and then I uh when, when I was going down COP, Canada Olympic Park, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I was six years old. I was on my skis and I um I forgot to pizza. Do you, know, do you know about the yeah. pizza? Yeah, I yep. do. And yep. uh, at the bottom of the hill, uh, there's this long <laughs> piece of snow, and then there's the steps up to um, oh no the the lodge. And I went face first into those metal. Oh steps. my god, you did not. Yeah, and I was a kid, and it just traumatized me. And so I I loved going to the mountains with my friends, though, right? Oh and so god. I picked up snowboarding because, and you know, I, there there was a time when like. It wasn't really cool to be a skier. Like you had to snowboard. I remember to that. Boys. I remember that. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, from that down, I was a snowboarder and then I became a skateboarder and I, I did that until I hurt my knee. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I snowboarded and I, I was a big snowboarder. I'm a Canadian boy, Jeffers. Like that, I, yeah, I know, I but like all the ice sports, all the Canadian friends, I'm like, hey, do you like snowboard or ski? You know, you want to go? They're like, no, and I was like, what, what what's happening right now? <laughs> Who am I talking oh, to? I, I love doing it. Have I done it since I turned 18? I have not. I don't have right. time for that shit. I'm old. I got bills. <laughs> we, we, I can't we, slide down we, a mountain. We snowboard. But... We All do. Right. That's I, cool. just, I don't have time. I don't have time to slide down mountains anymore. Okay. Cla Claudia, just fell mountain, down, Claudia just fell down the mountains as I tried to teach her. So, I mean, you know, it's cute. That's <laughs> cute. Until one of you breaks your neck. That's really cute. Wow. All right. Dark, <laughs> dark, dark, okay. dark. All right. So, uh, so what, what were we talking about? Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, it is a pretty famous Star Wars game and, and actually video game in general. It is one that, for the most part, uh, got like huge rating reviews across the board back in the day. Uh, I have played it a few times, which is really rare for me to play a game that long that many times. Mm -hmm. I know, Nerdy, you've played it. Uh, oh, 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 boy, it have I played this game. Do you, we could we could start counting the devices I've played this game on because Knights of the Old Republic is everywhere now. Oh, it's everywhere. I have it on my phone. Give it your I have phone. It on my iPad. Yeah. I yeah. have not paid for the Switch version, but I probably should just to be a completionist. 
Um, <laughs> but no, I, I, I love Knights of the Old Republic a lot. So um, Aspire actually were the ones that did the port slash remaster, whatever you really want to call it. It's basically a port uh, from the old game to like, you know, iOS, uh, mm -hmm. Switch, all that. They also do other things. They're basically referred to as like a, a service uh, company. So like they've been doing a lot of remasters or ports for other games, not just Star Wars, but that one, Star Wars Pod Racer is another one I think they did. And so mm -hmm. for some reason, at, at some point, someone was like, let's give this company a complete remake, which really with a game this old, it's basically like building a, ground, a game from the ground up almost. So they did that, and we got the announcement last September, which I'm sure you know you probably remember, Nerdy, and I think you might have been sitting next to me, actually. Yeah. And I, what I didn't know at that time was apparently they've been working on it for three years. The reason I didn't know that at the time is because they barely showed us anything. Uh, but mm -hmm. all was well, at least we thought so, until recently. Um, well, this... let's, go back. let's go back to the... Let, let's not skip ahead of the announcement, though. Okay. Right? Let, yeah. let's, let, let's stop here for a second, because... That announcement, I don't know if you guys have seen, I'll send you, you should actually put the video of my reaction to that announcement on Java Chatter. Okay, because I'll do it. it is maybe seven seconds long. It's just, it's just Revan stepping out of the shadow, right? Yeah, like, it's Revan, it was. Light, uh, lightsaber ignited, and like, then like the, the title or whatever that goes across, so something like that, yeah. So first it was a music cue. Yep. I remember this so vividly. Like, it lives <laughs> in my bones. It was a music cue, and uh, I turned to Clarus, and she has no idea what's going on. She's never played right. Knights of the Republic. No, neither is she. Um, and I turned to her, and I just had this, like, oh, 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 my God, it's happening moment. And my chest was, like, swelling, and I was freaking the F out. <laughs> and Revan steps out of the shadows and I started to cry. And like not That doesn't sound not, like you. <laughs> no, but usually I cry like a I don't usually just cry like this. Like like Obi-Wan, like there's an emotional reason oh, uh, for sure. like an emotional thing. This was purely just like I I was in such a weird state of shock. Oh this yeah. This was being announced that I I just started to like lose it a little bit. And it, oh my God, I, yeah, I'll send you the video. It's it's crazy. This this announcement hit me like a sledgehammer. I was so excited. I was so emotional. Uh, you know, Knights Old Republic was one of the first games I got on the Xbox. And it's it's one that I've probably, I don't even know how many times I've beaten. You know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those things that like, now that it's on my iPad, I'll just start new games just to like <laughs> try out different weird things in the first planet. And uh yeah i just the the emotional experience that this announcement was for me it, more so than any video game announcement uh that i can remember like this was this was truly something special to me and i i was so excited i saw that aspire was doing it i thought they did an excellent job porting it to ios you know it's, yeah. it's tough to get a game this big to run on an ipad I uh, bet. and it, it runs on mine right and it, well like it, and granted it's a 20 year old game but um yeah, I, I that announcement to me, I just didn't want to skip by it because it it, no, it it was huge for me. It, like I was more excited about this than I think any video game coming out this year. Um, and obviously, yeah, and I can't really follow. It won't come out this year. <laughs> no, it won't come out this year. I can't follow up that reaction with that type of reaction. But I was screaming and was just very caught off guard. I think I was more just mm -hmm. sitting there in shock. I was just like, no part of me was like. No part of me ever thought that that would ever even be announced, let alone catch me off guard. Like, usually yeah. it's really hard to keep these things under wrap. I don't care who you are, but like, when, especially when it comes to Star Wars stuff, games, shows, whatever. But especially games. Something about the game industry, man, they, they, everywhere, something is leaked. So when, kind of the same that Nerdy said, I was just like, wait, what? I just didn't know what was happening at first, but then once I figured it out, I, I mean, I lost my shit. But yeah, and, and, I, I didn't cry, but like I, I was crying on the inside and I was freaking out and I just didn't understand what was going on. But at that moment, after that had gone, I realized I was like, wait, how far into this are they? Like, how far could they possibly be? I had no idea it was three years. Mm -hmm. Apparently, when they showed that very, very brief thing, it was three years. And recently, like June 30th, they finalized a demo to show to Lucasfilm and Sony. And they felt great about it, apparently. Now, this article comes from Bloomberg, which is Jason Schreier. If you don't know who that is, he's a very famous video game uh, article mm -hmm. writer. 
Uh, he, he does like these all uh, inside scoops and unions and stuff in the video game industry. And the following week, after showing the demo to them, they fire their design director and their art director. So it apparently, well. it didn't go great, well. It great did not. meeting, I bet. I bet you all those people, week. oof. You know, if you're coming out of a big meeting like that and you feel like it's going to go great and you get fired the next week, like that is it's really bad it's like it's like taking that big test that you're like oh my god i freaking aced that thing i nailed it you get your grade back and like you failed like what? wait what i'm sure it was just going in you feel confident and then you're like oh i studied the complete wrong material yeah, yeah, yeah. you get in there you're like oh what's happening uh yeah. yeah so uh the reports are and some of this is like kind of a hearsay because you know nobody wants to present their names obviously uh is that <laughs> People on the project rep- reported to uh, Bloomberg that uh, apparently they were very caught off guard. They, they weren't expecting that, obviously. They're expecting the complete opposite. Uh, but then so the studio heads at Aspire actually told the staff after this that the demo, co- the demo or vertical slice, as they called it, wasn't where they wanted it to be. And so the project would be paused, which we now know is indefinitely. They don't have a timetable for it, mm-hmm. uh, which is not great. Which is interesting because, and this was the part that I found that kind of blew me away, is apparently originally they actually thought this game was going to come out the end of 2022, Aspire did. But developers reportedly were like, no, no, realistic target's like 2025. So they got a little ambitious on one side of the staff, it sounds like, rather than the other. The more realistic side was like, no, guys, like, you're crazy. Uh, And yeah, so I guess one of the people also with the project suggested that there was a disproportionate amount of time and money that went into the demo and the project's course was, wasn't sustainable. So apparently they focused too much on like trying to wow, you know, their superiors of, you know, Sony and, and Lucas. And uh, then when that tanks, they basically had like almost, I don't want to say nothing, but like apparently not much because now they have no timetable. And to make things worse, to wrap it up the article, uh, apparently Saber Interactive uh, is joining the project. They already have. And Aspire actually believes that Saber, whom apparently does the outsourcing work for the project, may just take it over completely, which means Aspire would be completely out of like, they would just be out of this. I mean, this is a huge thing for those that don't know. Aspire is somebody who like goes from like porting games around to basically getting their own game to make. That's a huge score to then lose, potentially lose that score altogether or to have this bad of a fumble is rough. Like real rough. I think so. it, it goes beyond that, right? Like I think that this is, um, uh, it, it's indicative of the fact that there is no culture at Aspire around the idea of building a game, right? And so no, the there's not what what they were so good at, yeah, is not building games. Like exactly, they, they did not create a single asset. No. In Knights Old Republic for iOS. Nope. They did not create a single asset in Pod Racer nope. for the Switch, right? That wasn't what they were hired to do. And so I, I think that Aspire could be fine if they take a step back, go make a couple of really good ports, or go create an original game. But yeah. in terms of creating like an IP, working with an IP to take on something as important to that IP as Knights of the Republic is. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I think that this is just a, a black eye that they won't recover from in, in that way anytime soon. No, but I could be wrong. Like, you know, some other they, who knows, maybe the Justice League will come and ask them to make a Justice League game next week. Um, <laughs> I, I don't understand why any of these companies do half the things they do at the end of the day. Um, I don't know. But this one's such a real head scratcher for me. Like I once I found out who was making it, you know, after my hype had died down, I even mm-hmm. then was like, wait, Hold on. It doesn't mean I don't like Aspire, right? It's just kind of exactly how Nerdy just framed it. They don't make games. And you're now giving them the remake of a game that is arguably one of, if not the biggest Star Wars game that's ever been made. And you're like, here you go. Here's here it is. And you're like, I just don't who I just don't. Why would you green light that? I guess I, I guess that is I mean, I understand Aspire trying to take it on, but they don't make games. But who? Because Let they that did a good job of like porting it over. You're like, you're not creating any new story. It's not like Respawn where they had to come in and come in with a new story, build all of that out. All of that dialogue is there. It's, you know, updating those pieces. Dialogue, sure. But the but like the coding and the aspects the and the art, aspects. that's all that's all like you have a frame. It's like, you know, it's like kind of like you have the um, the outline. 
Yeah. Because like, you know, you can even like, if you did a remake and you just did it shot by shot the same, but now you still have to fill in the lines with all new things. Like it has to look tw- like it's coming out in 2022 or three or four or five or whatever. I'm also mm-hmm. surprised that the first demo that was expected is almost in a year four for that. That's not another. That crazy. That's not, not for a timeline for a video game. That's not that crazy. I thought timelines for video games about five years, though. It depends on the game. Uh, I, there's really no one universal benchmark because if we think about it, there are some games. <laughs> um, there are some games where I swear I don't know if I'll ever even see them. Um, yeah. they, I've there's what was that game that's been developed for like ten years? The name is escaping me all of a sudden. Um, good and e- good and evil two or something like that. Uh, not, not good and evil two. Um, I'll figure it out. Star Citizen. Uh, Star Citizen's one of them. Six, yeah, uh, there's there's games that've been development for like a stupid amount of time. We've seen mm-hmm. barely anything, and it's just like they just keep. And but those are huge undertakings. But I think this. Is a huge. This game is huge. Like this game, when it came out, was it two thousand two, three, two, uh, two? It right? was like, like Claudia. I'm not. I'm not exaggerating this just because I love Star Wars. This was like like we'd never seen anything like it. Like this, the scale of this game, the amount of ridiculous amount of dialogue in this game, all voice acted, all of it voice acted. It was the craziest, like best thing you'd ever seen, and. Even though we're in like a new, you know, we have more technology now, that doesn't mean that that's going to be less work just because they have a framework for it. Because that's all they have. They just have like a framework. They have nothing else going for them other than like the dialogue. They even wanted to, they said they actually wanted to bring in the voice actors and actually have them record new stuff too. So they wanted to just like go all out and go basically new for the most part. And like, I get uh, it. I just looked up. It is 2003. Three. Thank you. Um, I, I think that they would have to update it. Look, here's the thing. Knights Old Republic, as much as I love it, I do love is, it. Is is a is a is a flawed game in some ways, right? Oh, for sure. Like, it is a combat system that is so dense. Yeah, they weren't gonna do that combat to system. Understand? They were. Um, do it. Basically, so for those of you who don't know, uh, Knights Old Republic is built on a uh, Dungeons and Dragons idea where when you attack. There are like basically there are dice rolls that are happening, um, but you don't see them. Yeah. But so how much damage you're doing, whether you hit or not, all of this is based on this like dice mechanic mm-hmm. that happens in the code. And it, it's a really it's complicated. It is winning. Beating that game isn't easy. There are parts of that game where if you spec your characters up the wrong way, you can get kind of stuck. Right. It, it's a game that it, it has issues. Um, I think it's a beautifully flawed game. I think it's a nearly perfectly flawed game. Uh, and I love it dearly. But in bringing that game to a modern audience, I think that there's a lot of work that you would have to do to sell it for uh, whatever. I, how much is a game in the States? They're like $90 uh, Canadian. The new right? consoles now are 70 70 Okay, so like $70 American, $90 Canadian, right? Um, if you're going to sell it for that, you have to cater to a new audience, which means cater oh, yeah. to younger people who have grown up in a video game environment where games play differently than Knights of the Old Republic did. Right. Right. It's going to have better and gameplay. Yeah. You you would have to. You And the the expectations of a Star Wars game, especially Knights of the Old Republic in terms of graphics, astronomically high. If oh, you don't come out same. with triple A level graphics, there, you will be roasted and this is not some title that you can be like oh it's like the fun side title like star wars hunters right we're yep. coming to the switch yeah. no one th- that movie er, er, we played it at celebration we did that game is not that that game is not going to get torn apart it is going nah. to be it'll fun be, for it'll what be it criticized. is criticized yeah it'll be criticized for some of the mobile stuff you know yeah, obviously yeah. it's going to have cartoony graphics the graphics are super fun there there's going to be some pretty stock criticisms for it but i think ultimately it's going to be a free-to-play game that a lot of people are going to enjoy some people are going to be not entertained by it's going to be for the audience that it's for right right that game has nothing to live up to knights of the old nah. republic has to live up to the fact that it is remembered as one of the great games of the original xbox right it was one of the great games of this console generation step forward it lives in people like me who have an, a level of nostalgia for this game because you've got to remember, this game came out just after Attack of the Clones. Like, this was peak Star Wars frenzy from yeah. my childhood. Yeah, same. And 
the 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 love of this game and this franchise is so immense yep and if you don't put out an absolute like jedi survivor Banger. level game they're gonna get torn to shreds on this yeah you can't put out a mediocre product here the so, expectation is too high if we were in that meeting flies on the wall my guess is they got absolutely shredded oh in they that got meeting they got torn apart like i think i think i mean even, i don't know right i don't know what they presented the demo might have been great well apparently it wasn't uh, according to according to the people that matter right no, i'm not yeah. saying us right uh but there's a key point that nerdy said it has to look triple a level etc like mega here's the thing they're not triple a studio they're not even close i like aspire but they're not a triple a level studio so i ask once again how the heck this got green lighted to give them this because they did a good job on the port that's look, not that's not good enough they, they got nuts. the job because they went hey look we made republic commando it sold gangbusters we made Pod yeah, racer it sold yeah, gangbusters yeah we Love made both. this they like the lucasfilm has if you're lucasfilm right and you're going into these meetings and aspires like we've we've ported five games yeah, yeah. and nerdy nightly has bought all five of them <laughs> <You know what laughs> on I mean? multiple like, platforms multiple platforms not just one platform We've got these idiots over around at, our in finger Canada, yeah. well, here too. The, at the Nerdy Nightly buying all of our games where we make money. And if I'm if I'm Lucasfilm and I'm like, well, if Nerdy Nightly's buying them, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> that dude will buy anything. That doesn't mean anything. It's, <laughs> if it's Star Wars, I'll probably pay for it. No, but my point is like uh, they, they once you've made enough money for a company and you go, hey, look, we we've ported over these games. Let, let's chat for a second we have an idea we want to remake knights of the old republic if i'm lucasfilm and i'm looking at the pi pile of cash that they sit me on when i come to the meetings with aspire because they've made me a pile of cash and that they've made me a throne out of money i'm going yeah yeah i would love a second throne out of yeah money yeah that game yeah what's crazy is that they they also ported over knights of the old republic 2 a game which up until like a week ago you couldn't beat yeah so they're not perfect see like, even on their port, the Nice Little Pub 2, I told you about this, it had a glitch so bad that you mm -hmm. couldn't get past a certain point and beat the game. The spoiler, that was Aspire. That was the same company. So, to not even a To be fair to Aspire, to be fair to Aspire, they tried to do Public 2 is not really a finished game. Yes. It's broken. I it's, know. It's not finished. I know. As much as I want to love it, and and people who say that they like Knights of the Republic 2 more than Knights of the Republic 1, I have questions. I would but, never say um, that, but I actually still really like the second one. They just one, want to be different, that but, person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't a finished game. No, it uh, wasn't. And so it, it has problems. And so it's not, that one's holding, that one's not 100% on Aspire. But no, it's I not. if I was Aspire, I would not be looking at the news coming out about my company right now and feeling great about it. You know no, what I mean? I'd be like, not at all. I'm a little concerned. Yeah. Well, just, a, I would be a little bit like, uh, we don't, we don't look awesome right now. It's it's interesting that Nerdy talked about the gameplay of the last one. I'm gonna be uh, I've beaten that game at least three to four times, and I still to this day don't actually know how the combat works in terms of like all the all the like little increment things. I don't know. I really don't. I don't. I still beat it. I still oh, love. Yeah, I I still loved it. I don't. Dense. I don't need to fully understand it. I really don't because it does a lot of it for you. If you really understand it, you probably just destroy it, that game, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still had a fun time. It's weird, though, the gameplay of that, in my opinion, is actually what keeps that game easy to go back to now. Like, its gameplay doesn't age poorly too, too badly, in my opinion, because if it was like a Jedi Fallen Order type game that was made back then, and you tried to play it now from a 2002 game, mm -hmm. I'd be, I, it's like unplayable, in my opinion. I, I can't play games like that. I've tried. It just doesn't work for me. But since they had this different, like, almost turn-based like system, almost not exactly turn-based, uh, it works. Like, I can play it now, and I still have a great time with it, personally. And mm -hmm. But but Nerdy's right. To bring it to a new audience, you basically have to do a Final Fantasy VII remake pull-off, which is like a one-in-a-million pull-off, by the way. For those who don't know, Final Fantasy VII is another, is a, actually a great comparison, even though it's not a Star Wars game. This is a beloved, one of the best, like, RPG games that came out back in the day. It's actually a JRPG. And... The, the original Final Fantasy VII is a top five video game of all time. Exactly. And then... Like it is one of the best video games ever made and I, maybe the best game of the 90s. I, I completely agree with that. And so, when they announced that there was a remake for that game, I also never expected that. But the reason they basically did it was because, like, fans would shut up about it. And they're like, okay, well, there's clearly money to be made here. So we're going to give it a go. 
Um, but at the same We're time, split it into nine parts, and every single part. It's is three parts. Be it's three parts. They announced it. Anyways, oh, there are DLCs. You and I both know, and I will buy like all of them. Fifteen ways, to and pay I will for buy Final all of them. Seven. The point Redux is, though, re whatever re the point is, they put on it. They took the gameplay and they basically made what is mostly a new age level style of playing, but still combined a little bit of old elements, and somehow it's perfect. And I don't know how they pulled it off, but I guarantee it's a huge feat that they did that. And I don't know. Good? Well, Final Fantasy VII Remake? You've not played it? Here's the thing. When I say that Final Fantasy what? VII is one of the best games of all time, I mean that I have not picked up the remake because I, I, I don't know that I can be fair to it. Like, I don't know that you can capture the experience that I had with Final Fantasy VII in a way that I will enjoy. And so I've just been like, it's one of those things that like, I, I don't know what to do because okay, okay. I've, I've heard good things, mm -hmm. but I'm, I have so I like, I'm one of those people who's like, I'll just go play Final Fantasy seven again. Like, I don't need, I don't need new graphics, you know? And mm. so I've just, I haven't touched it out of fear that like, if I didn't like it, I would be angry. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, no, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> both hurt and upset by this, but it's, um, anyways, how do I? I don't know how to get past that. Actually, oh, I'm sorry. This is a Star Wars podcast, but I have to address this. Um, no, it's it's it's. Is it perfect? No, but it's absolutely amazing. And it and and I don't want. I'm not going to spoil anything, but I will say this: it is a little bit different. And there's two ways you can do remakes. You can do it a shot by shot, frame by frame remake of. And, and that's I'm just saying for all remakes, not just Final Fantasy or Star Wars. Right? You have two choices. You can do shot by shot remake. And everything looks exactly the same. It's just new graphics, essentially, right? New gameplay. But if story-wise, it's the same. Or you can tweak a little bit or flesh it out more. And so Final Fantasy VII Remake does that. It fleshes out things that, like, it's all the story, but moments that you never knew you want, like, never, like, you never got to see those in-between moments. And they don't feel like filler. They feel like an actual bigger story being played out. And I don't want to say anything too much, but, like, it changes things just a tiny bit. And uh, yeah, it makes it its own thing. And I, that's, See, that's, that's, that's where I get nervous. That's where no, the no. little butterflies start to go in my stomach where I'm like, oh, but, but here's the thing. You always, you always, bit. you always have the original Final Fantasy seven. So you just treat this as like, it's, just, it's, it's literally a different Final Fantasy seven. It's like, and just, just give it a go. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, that's the thing the here. The number of movie studios that have tried to pitch me that exact same thing. And I've gone to their movies and left upset. Okay. Well, Final Fantasy seven remake got very good reviews across the board. Okay, so and he did love it. And I absolutely loved it. And I hold that game in the same regard that you do. So here's here's the question I want to ask you then. Um if if they're going to remake yeah. Next Old Republic, right? Would you rather them go full on Final Fantasy VII with it? Or would you prefer like what they did with Diablo 2 last year? With what was it re no Warhammer was reforged. What was the Diablo 2 on? Diablo 2 resurrected? Um, where you basically, it's literally just a graphic overlay and you can literally swap between the graphics of the old and the new. Would you rather a whole new game or would you just like a new graphical graphical interface? Uh, this is where I struggle because I, I'm of two minds here and I've talked to other people too and I kind of agree with both points. It's really hard for me. Like, did I ever think this game be remade? No. But since that's the conversation and there's two choices, um, my personal preference would be the Final Fantasy VII Remake uh, way and give them wiggle room to change some things. And the reason I say that is because I, I, I feel like from an artistic perspective, if you're given this thing and all you're doing is doing a trace, like you're just doing trace or dot to dot, that's not very inspiring for an artist. Um, so if you want to take the story in slightly different directions or, um, or get a third of the way through and completely change what the rest of it would look like from there on, Go for it. I, I don't care. I really don't. Because if it's a good story at the end of the day, I don't care. And if I don't like it, guess what? The original one, I can just go back and play that. So I'm good with that. I think you have a better chance of... It. If you just do a shot by shot, I'm, those ones are not usually my favorite. Though I will admit, like Resident Evil 2 was a shot by shot remake. And I never played the original, so I really love that one. Then there's people that I talk to that are like, do we even need a remake of this game? And I'm like, yeah, probably not, honestly. I don't know if we actually do, though it does excite me weirdly to play a remake of this game. So I'm kind of like of two minds. Um, mm -hmm. I I do think we keep dipping into if you've listened to any of our other podcasts or whatever, we keep dipping back into everything we've already done Star Wars, like everything, like 
other than like the Mandalorian and a couple of exceptions, right? We're we're all we're still seeing Star Wars play it very safe. Um, though we do have the future of like Taika Waititi's you know movies that have that future. We have the Acolyte in the future. So well, they though, just announced like Amanda uh, Amanda Stenberg. Um, they're going to be playing the lead of that uh, news, which cool we all knew a year ago, right? Right. That's so I was like, I thought you told us that already that yeah. was the weirdest announcement ever because um it was on amandla posted it on their instagram and then the star wars twitter like thumbs up it and like retweeted it and we're like oh yeah welcome uh them to the galaxy and i was looking at my phone i i was like literally because i was like scrolling for comic-con news for like all the reactions and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. that day and i was looking at that announcement and i was like did I make up that this announcement happened already? Like I, I was so sure. And so I, I, I did some Googling and I, I I'm, I'm still confused. Cause I thought that they were announced to be in the show like 16 months ago and, or not, not that far, but whenever Disney investor day was last year. And apparently yeah, yeah. that was just rumors that were so accurate. Oh, but wow. Lucasfilm was like, we're not going to talk about that for a year. It's crazy to me. It yeah, because we talked like, about it on the podcast. I think too. we thought it was an actual thing when we talked about yeah, it. One of our first episodes. Like, yeah, one of our first non binary, uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we talked about actor, 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 actor. We talked uh, about in it. the universe. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's so great. We love our presentation. I think we did. Yeah. No, I know for a fact Are you, you sure? talked about okay. this. Because I wouldn't have known this. Because we had a list <laughs> of shows that were coming out in 2022 <laughs> and 2023, and Acolyte was one of them. We talked about it pretty extensively. Um, that's wild. I had no idea that that wasn't just, officially announced. Okay. It's just so funny that like the, that was, and the, and the official announcement was an Instagram post because they were at San Diego comic-con. Like it wasn't even a, like at a star Wars thing. Amandala just happened to be there. And so they were like, well, since you're at comic-con, why don't you just announce that you're in the show? And if I, <laughs> the whole story of that, I'm like, what, what? what? is this marketing campaign it's crazy and i'm happy about it look i i, I think they're very talented um i think rue is like an iconic character that, oh yeah yeah yep. uh mm -hmm. yep rue's death in the hunger games oh, sells man. that whole franchise oh yep. and i think that like that that the success of that franchise goes back to them so i think that you know i'm i'm, I'm so excited to see what amanda is going to do in the acolyte and what that show is and yeah. you know this dark side of the force we're getting um, but yeah, no, that, that the accolade is, you know, is new. I think honestly, Star Wars video games is where we're going to see a lot of new stuff, right? Because Jedi Survivor is going to show us stuff we've never seen before, I think. Yeah, and Fallen Order did too. Like, it was a yeah. new story and a new section. And like, I'm not, look, I'm not saying everything is playing it safe, but we're still kind of in the safe area ish. But I think mm -hmm. Nerdy actually, I, I, you know, honestly, I think the reason this game got made is actually probably what Nerdy said. I think the real reason this game got made was because it really was just Aspire being like, hey, we can do this. And, but now that it's this far in, it's like, even though they're having problems, they're like, well, we got to do it. Because if it was any other title, like if it was a new Star Wars title, right, they would cancel this game. They would 100% cancel it. They've canceled plenty of Star Wars games. It's happened all the time. But you just announced one of the best Star Wars games, one of the best mm -hmm. games ever. And you're like, yeah, we're going to remake this. You can't take that back. It's just like if Final Fantasy VII did the same thing with their remake, they'd have been torched like they, they would never heard the end of it it they wouldn't it wouldn't just go away so now they're in a weird spot and i'm just more worried about what this game looks like in the future and if we ever see it or if they just quietly try to snuff it out i don't know i don't think they will but they're it's 2022 can realistically I, I, when we can see I bring this up game. an alternate point of view that i read yeah. on the internet that i actually found interesting sure yeah, someone please. someone brought up the idea the theory if you will mm that uh, they are, Lucasfilm is the one behind this indefinite hold. Okay. Because they want the game to be canon. And so they mm. are they are pushing the game back so that it can fit into what they're going to be doing with the Old Republic in four or five years. Yeah. Um, there has been a lot of talk about, you know, that, them making movies or a show about that era, which wouldn't surprise me. So... I, the only the only part I would have to debate on that is firing their two of their lead people because Aspire did pivot and say like look they told their staff like we're going to go like search for the projects like we're gonna go do the thing we're good at in the meantime we're not just gonna like you know sit here obviously we're gonna go do stuff in the meantime so why get rid of those two really um, I think Aspire is gonna make the game 
Yeah. I think Saber will. Yeah, no, I think so too. You know, Saber is the parent company. They own Aspire, right? Like it, it makes They're sense for them to be it. like, look, if you we 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 gave you all the chance to like make a new game. Yeah. We left you Don't unsupervised for a while. You're going back to what you're good at. <laughs> go, go port, go port stuff. Go make money. You know. Yeah. Oh man. Go, go port. I don't know. Battlefront, uh, Rogue Squadron. What? No. What was it? What was the Battlefront after? Um, Battlefront Two on the PSP. It was Battlefront. Ro- I maybe. I never had a PSP. I can't remember. It was great. The original Battlefront games were so good, and the the PSP ports of those. Chef's kiss. I miss Galactic Conquest. What a, if you're going to Oh, do I love Galactic Conquest, 3, yeah. If you're doing Battlefront 3, bring back Galactic Conquest. Oh, I'm mode. so on board. Um, um, especially if you could Galactic Conquest with friends, like that's what I want. Oh, I want a, I want a team too. of 10 versus a team of 10 be able to like Galactic Conquest over a land party one night. Beautiful. Oh, I'd love that. Um, I guess I, 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 I think Aspire won't make this game. I think Saber will. No. And yeah, I think it's I, over. I think that the, the chance of it being canon probably not i don't want to spoil the game um so i don't it's hard for the game to be canon in the way the jedi fallen order is because it is very much an rpg uh and you have a lot of control over your character you do you have a lot uh, of you have i mean yeah I mean, there's i don't think there's much of a spoiler to say like your choices matter in this game i think that's one of the things that we enjoyed the most about it you can literally go to the light side go to the dark side or be a gray yeah. jedi which is that's not canon but you you literally could do that in the game so like yeah, for it to be canon, unless they made it into more... They would have to change the end of the story. Well, they would also have to make it so, like, you're not making as much... Your choices don't matter as much. They, they just don't. Like Right. Um, and which they can't do because of, like, the, the reveal about your character at the end of that game. Yeah. Um, which I'm tiptoeing around because it is arguably, like, one of the big spoilers in video games. Uh, the You can't make that canon... Because that character has to have a canon mm-hmm. existence, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that it would be canon adjacent at best. But I could see them trying to put it in the world of canon so that they can cult their uh, corporate it is, everything and make it, money. Synergy. Synergy. It does yeah, take place thousands of years technically before like Phantom Menace. So like they have like a lot of wiggle room, but they would definitely have to like plan out that if they're doing anything else with that era so like I, I think there might be some validity to that theory um the last thing one of the things i want to ask though especially for you claudia because you're not the only person i know i've had other friends ask me about this game they're like um should i play it uh should i just wait for the remake if you're asking if you should wait for the remake my answer now is no do not wait for the remake anymore i really do think the first one still holds up uh but you 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 and i talked about it and we were pl- i was planning on taking you through the game like either the original or the remake but now do you even have any interest in the original because like i mean i just don't see the remake happening for a long time for me i don't know it depends on how bad the gameplay you said it's all very very confusing oh and that uh, makes Claudia, me i was a i was a okay so i don't know how many times i beat it but i was starting at a 12 year old and I still couldn't tell you what I was doing combat wise. Um, I, I had like a general like surface level understanding and I got through the game. I say this. I think that watching Clarus play through Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, oh, my God. Over the last <laughs> yeah, few that's weeks. Fair. Has pointed out to me how hard older styles of controls can be. Yeah. For people who did not play them back then and are yeah. used to modern controls. Um, cause she, she's struggling with the I controls know. of that game and it is not her, right? Like she, you know, she plays no. modern games. With no, the it is the fact that you have to like unlearn how to touch the controller. Mm-hmm. And she actually, she, she, she was struggling the first time so much. She actually bought a like USB and 64 controller to play the game. It's the, it's the mapped easier. out buttons are easier. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it is one of those things where like. Maybe play it on the iPad. It's a great iPad experience. It plays really well. And the controls are mapped to mobile in a way that I think makes sense to modern audiences in a way that I think that it the, the original controls might be clunky in the hands of someone who didn't play it back then. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, I will actually add on to that and say, weirdly enough, even though I am mainly a console gamer, I played this on PC and so for me, the controls don't feel off at all because I think it's similar to like the iPad. It's very easy. It's a point and click. It's it's um, moving with 
this, but like really like the mouse actually makes it easier than a controller, in my opinion. So I've I w- never played it with mouse and keyboard. I wonder what that's like. It's pretty easy. It's He's pretty like, easy. I need to buy that port now. Yo, because oh, there's, no, well, there's a fan oh. made. So there's a fan <laughs> oh, made I, mod. No, I, I do own it on PC uh, because I tried to play it on stream and I can play it on my computer, but I can't play it on my computer and stream it at the same time without it getting borked by OBS. That's fair. So I never was able, I was never able to figure it out. And so I never I because that was originally like the thing I wanted to stream. So I but I never figured it out, unfortunately. Yeah. So they uh, they made a fan made mod on like uh, Steam for the second one that quote unquote like fixes slash finishes it. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, it's just Allegedly. It's a suggestion. Anyways, though, um, I think you should at least eventually give it a try, Claudia, but I, I would probably hang out with you and do it, and I, I would probably suggest us playing it on computer um, you, you or You know what iPad. I think hurts the game? Up. What? You know what I think hurts the game for modern audiences? Sure. You don't get a lightsaber until, like... It's so long. 15 hours it's, into the game. Uh, you know, he's right. Honestly, even back then, as much as I love the game, that to this day, I'm still like can i just get to the lightsaber like can i just get mm-hmm. there like it's a long time it's arguably one of the long okay no wait hold on Nah, it's still long the other one i was thinking of is um jedi outcast 2 uh kyle katarn that mm-hmm. one yeah, takes a while time. to get the lightsaber too but i i tried that the other day it's not nearly as long as uh knights of the old public it's a while yeah it's a while it's it's the it might be the longest prologue i've ever played is it honestly it feels more than 15 hours to me it feels like 20 i think well it depends because here's the thing there's you can side quest like that first planet you can side quest for a while yeah you can you can kind of do whatever you want like yeah. the, there's a l- bunch of stuff with mission there's a bunch of stuff you know there's there's a there's pizzazz game that's completely stacked against you you're not oh, supposed to win and and you you can't leave without winning the dueling tournament but leveling up high enough to win the final fight of the dueling tournament can take a while it is like you can literally probably spend almost 20 hours in that game. You guys are really you selling this the- <laughs> to a modern <laughs> If you want to if you want to do everything in Knights of the Republic, it probably takes north of 100 hours. Yeah, like, I think so. Side quests, Tech, everything. Like, I think I think how long to beat it listed at like 60 ish hours uh, or 70 ish hours. Fair. But like that's like doing a little bit of the side stuff and the main quest, I think. I think it was Enough 60 stuff to be like at level for things. Right. Yeah. And then I think if you're a completionist, yeah, I think it goes like above 100. I think it goes around 100, which makes sense because there's a lot of side stuff you don't have to do. But really, the side stuff, I, I swear, I'm not trying to undersell. Like the side stuff is a lot of it is really just like story based and super interesting. And some of it's mm-hmm. really fun. Like I actually like it's one of those things that none of them, they didn't feel like fetch quests, right? They didn't feel like I was playing an old Assassin's Creed game where I'm like, you're just going to go get that collectible on a map. There was like a lot of story to everything you did. Oh yeah, and there's 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 quests where it's like you have to figure out who the murderer is. Oh yeah, that's true. And you have to like interrogate yeah. people. Yeah, and you can be wrong. You can be wrong. You can accuse people of murder and this be game, wrong. This game's fantastic. It's, like, it's crazy. It's so good. It's, La- it really is so. I, I, I guys, I when I it. say I love this game. Oh, I love. Like, it's I, one of my favorite I, games of all time. Yeah. Um, I just it uh, it's I it is tough to introduce it to new audiences. I think it is. It's it's a little clunky. It looks a little silly at times. It does. Um, and, you know, it, it's a slow start. It really is a slow start, even though it has the exact same beginning as Halo. Um, <laughs> I still think exact I, same first level as the original Halo game. That's funny. I never thought about that. Halo. I'm not saying they stole it from. No, no, no. Public, I see what you're saying. But I think it's I think it is like a, a, a delightful homage to Night's Yeah, Republic. yeah, it probably is. Um. You know, uh, the last thing I'll say is like the because like I've seen arguments which are, are fair of like, does this need to be remade? But see, we talk when Nerdy and I start talking about like the little things about the game. I start to realize like for a lot of people that missed out on it that I think would really enjoy it. That does being bring some validity to the argument that it should be remade because uh, I, I think it would draw a lot more people into one of my, you know, one of the best games that just. But the problem is the execution of it. Wait, wait, wait. I have to I have to correct myself. I was thinking about that for a second. That doesn't make sense. Halo mm-hmm. predates Knights of the Old Republic. So the Knights of the Old Republic opening level copied Halo, not the other way around. Interesting. Oh, very interesting. Halo yeah, you're right. Came out I, two years early. Sometimes when you're recording things, folks, you don't you don't think about the tiny little things of dates and years and things. Um, yeah. So. Oh, that, no, I thought about it. I just I had I had to make sure I was correct because I didn't. I just like nerdy's always right. Nuts. I just assume he's right. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, weird. Any other. Uh, 
Anything else? Claudia, you got any big I mean, thoughts? I think it, it's great if it does get remade. I know it's your favorite Star Wars game of all time. It's one of my favorite games, period, of all time. I know, but it's your favorite Star Wars game, which yes. I was like, even compared to Jedi Fallen Order, and you were like, yeah. That's comparing apples to oranges, but yes. But I absolutely love Jedi Fallen Order. I don't, don't take that the wrong way. Yeah, and Jedi so, Fallen Order is a better game by modern standards. But yeah, by modern standards, for Knights sure. Old Republic is my favorite Star Wars game. For sure. Yeah. Um, sorry, continue. But for me, I mean, I feel like so many people, and you know, not just myself, it's like you got into gaming later or you didn't yeah. have the consoles when you were younger or it just wasn't something you were passionate about until, you know, now. Um, and I think that, you know, because there's so much passion behind, it's the same concept of, you know, Zelda Ocarina of Time is one of your all time favorites. Yeah. I have never played that. Yeah. I played my first Zelda game with you. Yeah. Um, you know what? Three years ago. Yep. So being mm -hmm. introduced into like franchisers like later in life, it's fun to be able to share that with, you know, the people that you love, especially if it's somebody yeah. something that you love. Like yeah. Nerdy, I know for you, like if Knights of the Old Republic does end up coming out, you're gonna love watching Clarice's reactions when the new one's remade and or you're going to be, watching be upset. every little thing to make sure that she reacts in the correct way. I have no idea. I, I don't know. Based <laughs> on how she's responding to Ocarina of Time, I don't know. Because it's I'm old right now, old though. Republic. Yeah, she's she's uh, she's she's not loving it the way that I do. So like I so Ocarina of Time is a great example, actually, of this, because if there is. So that's one of my also one of my favorite games, right? And I can still go back and play it. But like, uh, look, the N64 controller is terrible and I, that's fine. But if there's ever been a game that I had in my mind that should be remade, actually, it's that one. Like, I not I mean, yes, it's a fantastic game, but I've actually always thought Ocarina of Time should be remade because I, no. It, uh, no, I no, it should. It absolutely should be flag on the play. Nah, no, you it can't. should be. You can't you cannot update it like you. There's no way. Oh, it would be so great. There's no way to update it without having to make everything bigger. And when you make everything bigger, you make everything worse. You only have to Ocarina make it bigger. Time, you only got to make it bigger because of of, uh, of of pressure from the outside world. Just don't listen to them. Don't make it bigger. Don't no, make it a, a giant will want, Red Dead Redemption game. People will want a jump button. You know what I mean? Like people will want things that like break <laughs> how the game is built. That's true. And Ocarina of Time. Uh, Ocarina of Time is built to work. You know what I mean? And obviously, like. It, the, the speedrunners can break it. I, I know that. They're, they're exploits. But, like, it is a game that just functions from A to B to Z perfectly as is. Yeah. And I... One, I don't think you can remake it because Knights of the Republic does not have the reputation of being a landmark video game. Ocarina of Time is remembered as changing the industry. Have you like, seen... Have you seen, though, the Unreal Engine uh, rebuilds of uh, fan-made portions of the game whereas you do not change the controls you don't even change the size of the world it is lit so that is one game where i would say a shot by a shot, shot is how you should keep it actually and just have it with uh, it looks so good i would i would play the, the hell fairies the fairies are too sexy i don't need that in better graphics <laughs> like it, th they're weird they have giant pointy boobs if you skin those over with like boobs held together with vines you if you take if you make the graphics of ocarina of time better it is no longer a children's game i will stand by this until the day that i die you that <laughs> game becomes hentai okay it's basically tentacle porn at that point you update those graphics and you are making it for an adult man and look, yes, did someone do that in Unreal Engine? Yes, a pervert did that, okay? <laughs> a, a pervert updated that game because it is horny as hell. And it is only okay because the boobs are triangles. But if the <laughs> boobs had circular shape, they are too adult. You're not getting away with that shit. The, e, the ESRB is cracking down, giving you that 18 plus, you're dead in the water rating. I, I just this. like imagine if they announce that they're going to make oh. a remake of this. I just imagine Nergy just like, getting them the old man like they going on get to off my they, get off my lawn like go to like nintendo get off my lawn like you can't make oh, this it's too horny no i will i will buy it oh i know <laughs> i bought i bought that then that new super mario battle strikers game a couple weeks ago which was an utter disappointment um yeah. it's actually pretty it's a it's a well-made game there's just like no content in there's it no, yeah once it, I beat, yeah there's no content once I beat to it, it i was like well, why was this ninety dollars? Like, yeah, there's no it's content. It's the same to it. every match. I almost is the bought same. it. Why? Yeah, I almost bought it. Yeah. Ugh, and I love strikers from the GameCube. Anyways, okay, um, cool. So I think that's probably about it. 
Uh, there's been a lot of canceled Star Wars games, but I actually really don't think there's going to be one of them because the name's too big. So I guess we just kind of wait and see what happens next, but I think it's going to be a while before we hear anything. Yeah, I think uh, Saber's going to have to swoop in and save it all. And it's going to take them a long time. It sounds like uh, they're going to have to, I don't know, if start not start over, but like they have a lot of work to do. I just want like Rocksteady to come in and take it over <laughs> and turn it into an Arkham game. <laughs> but with lightsabers. <laughs> If they're going to remake it, like, go weird. You know we merely I mean? adopted the lightsaber. I was born with it, molded by it. Also, um, Nerdy, I'm still shocked that of all the video games you've bought, you still haven't bought Final Fantasy VII. I know we're going back to that. I, but I, 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 because we're on the podcast, I'm not going to, I'm not going to continue that conversation, but we are going to have this conversation at I length. Just, I'm going to bug you so like, much in your DMs. Buddy, I'll come on. Here's here's the thing. I don't have time for a seventy hour game right now. That it's I'm not, not play seventy. On stream. It's not seventy hours. Okay. I'll, here, you know what, Jeffers? I'll make you this promise. Okay. When they release the full game, I will buy it. And it's play not it. a full game. I well, it is a full game still. <laughs> it's just because you haven't played it. Because you don't know what you're when talking I, about. When I get Final Fantasy VII oh. remade from beginning to end, I will go to the store and I will buy it. All right. Okay. I'm gonna have so this conversation with you off the podcast. At some point in 2029, 20, I think. Right. All right, everybody. Part two. We uh, gotta before go. Before we go, before What's we up? go, I just want to say uh, the the greatest part about Knights of the Republic is that you become a Jedi in like four minutes. It's but awesome. you don't get a lightsaber. It takes twenty hours for to get there. Fifteen to twenty hours. Yeah. So yeah, you are fully you are fully not a Jedi, <laughs> and then you meet the Jedi, and they talk to you like four times, and then you're a Jedi. Oh, it and beautiful. The greatest transition from like prologue to main game, where they're like, "All right, it's nice to meet you." All right, you're a Jedi. Go yeah. do Jedi shit. Literally. And you're like, oh, okay. And for the record, in after you become a Jedi, in the in the future, you decide many multiple times if people live or die. <laughs> like big characters where they're like, do you want to live? Do you want to die? Oh, it's all on you. You get to choose. <laughs> so Mass uh, Effect does not exist without Knights of the Old Republic. And uh, Mass Effect One is just a shittier version of Knights of the Old Republic. But Mass Effect Two is a better version of Knights of the Old Republic. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna disagree so with that it's one. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think know, Mass Effect 2 is a better version. I really don't. The gameplay of Mass Effect 2 is fantastic. Like, oh no, the gameplay of Mass Effect 2 is great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, anyway. Yeah. Anyways, all right. Well, thanks so much for watching, everybody. <laughs> May the force be with you, Utini, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.